Thoroughbred Week with John Henderson is presented by Acti Staten, Adina Springs, Bloodstock Research, Breeders' Cup, Claiborne Farm, Doc Lane's Veterinary Pharmacy, Haggard Pharmacy, Horse Sense, Keeneland, Lane's End, Malone's, New York Thoroughbred Breeding and Development Fund, OCD Pellets, Old Colony Insurance Services, PBI Bank, Quillen Leather and Tack, Ramard, Sally Horse Vans, Shadwell Farm, and Windstar Farm. Hello everyone and welcome to Thoroughbred Week, featuring graded stakes action from Keeneland, including a three-year-old filly who draws in off the also eligible list to win the Grade 2 Raven Run Stakes. We begin at Keeneland with the off-the-turf Sycamore Stakes. Eagle Poise, the two-to-one favorite, Kurt Becker picks up the call. Six furlongs in one minute, 17 seconds. And here's Eagle Poise now to take the lead up the backstretch. Eagle Poise moving forward for Joe Rocco Jr., reflecting the response to the test toward the inside and regains the lead now by a half length as they head for the far turn. Gap of two more lengths back of that pair as they enter the far turn to Tricky Hat and the jar. That pair has been side by side virtually since the start, both within two and a half lengths of the lead, then a gap of nearly three more back to Olympic Thunder and Sun Tracer, who is last. The mile is on the board in one minute, 42 seconds, and into the final turn. Three furlongs to go, reflecting the leader. Eagle Poise second. Tricky Hat tries to pick them up third up on the outside, still a length off the lead. Najar fourth back toward the inside. Olympic Thunder, then Sun Tracer, who's six lengths off the lead. They turn for home, quarter mile to come. Eagle Poise, a narrow lead, reflecting second tricky hat third in a jar and sun tracers ringing wide off the far turn olympic thunder looks for room and behind horses sun tracer coming after eagle poise the jar drops back tricky hat is there between horses the jar trying to respond to this challenge up the inside of eagle poise who's still there and then sun tracer on the outside the jar with the lead Tricky Hat, Eagle Poi, Sun Tracer, but Najar and James Graham have captured the Sycamore Stakes from Eagle Poi's Tricky Hat and Sun Tracer. Najar by Shadwell Farm Stallion Jassel runs by Eagle Poise to defeat the favorite by three quarters of a length. James Graham aboard the Shadwell Farm Homebred in 241 and 2. The first stakes victory for Najar, who was coming off a third place finish in the American St. Ledger over the Arlington Park turf course. The Dan Pites trainee had lost nine straight since taking an allowance race at Oakland Park in March. The four-year-old colt was bred in Kentucky by Shadwell Farm and races in the colors of Shadwell Stable. Najar has earned nearly $238,000. James Graham with the Safe Ride of the Week, presented by Sally Horse Fans, the safest way to the winter circle. To Belmont Park for New York Reds in the Empire Classic. Saratoga snacks the three to two favorite. Tom Durkin has the call. First quarter was up in 23 and three. Warrior of the Roses controlling the pace. Money in your pocket prompting the pace. Saratoga snacks right with the leaders on the outside third. Spa City Fever on the fence and fourth. Read the prospectus is following Saratoga snacks down the backstretch in the far outside. Zetter home between horses. Then the gray biggers better add another five. Back to the trailer, Awesome Vision, as they move into the far turn. The pace a strong one here. 46 and 3 was the opening half mile. And up top, Warrior of the Roses, Money in Your Pocket, and Saratoga Snacks. The three of them at the midway point on the turn just heads apart with three furlongs to go. Junior Alvarado saying go here with Read the Prospectus. They're on the move on the outside. Spot City Fever down toward the rail. Bigger is better. Zetter home. And Awesome Vision coming alive just outside the quarter pole. Only five from the front. They turn for home and it's Saratoga Snacks in front. Saratoga Snacks the leader driving on a two and a half length advantage here. Money in your pocket is second. Bigger is better than Zetterholm. Read the prospectus sputtering on the outside. Spa City Fever at the rail. They're all chasing Saratoga Snacks home. Bigger is better is coming with giant strides on the outside, and they're coming down to the finish, and it is Saratoga Snacks, the winner of the Empire Classic. The favorite Saratoga Snacks, the winner by three quarters of a length over long shot, Bigger is better. Joel Rosario up in 148-3. and three. Second in last year's Empire Classic, Saratoga Snacks was coming off a third place finish in the John Morrissey Stakes at Saratoga. Trainer Gary Siaka electing to stretch him out rather than sprinting him in the six for long Hudson handicap. The four-year-old Ridgeling by Tail of the Cat was bred in New York by Mrs. Gerald Nielsen and was a $60,000 yearling. Saratoga Snacks has earned nearly $465,000 for August Dawn Farm of Hall of Fame football coach Bill Parcells. 
Saratoga Snacks paid $5 to win, and is the Malone's favorite of the week, presented by Malone's, Lexington's favorite steakhouse. Time now for the inside track on the Breeders' Cup Distaff with TCI's John and Joel. All right, let's talk Breeders' Cup, and let's start with the distaff. Joel, you know, when I look at this distaff field, the first thing I notice, it looks like there may only be six in here. A short field, but not short on quality. Absolutely not, John. A lot of good fillies in here, especially these top five I have, John. It starts with Royal Delta, the two-time defending champion. Now, she got beat last time out in the Beldame by right. Princess of Silmar, but I don't think that was her best race. We know she likes Santa Anita. She's developed that high cruising speed. If she can get back into that, fire her best race, she's definitely the horse to beat. Well, I'll tell you a horse we got to watch. She's very intriguing to me. She's a three-year-old. You mentioned her, Princess of Silmar. Joel, I think she's got a shot to be horse of the year if she can win this. She really does. She might only be number three on my list, the three-year-old running against older mares, but her run since the Kentucky Oaks, where she beat Beholder that day at a mile and eighth. We know she likes a distance. She's the closer of the group, and that run's been so impressive. If she wins this, depends on what Wise Dan, Game on Dude, some others do, but she could be horse of the year. Well, she's going to have to run past Beholder because you know she's going to be on the front end. Yeah, absolutely. Beholder loves Santa Anita John. She won the Zinyana impressively at a mile and a sixteenth. She loves the track, but can she get that extra sixteenth of a mile against this group? I think it's going to be tough on her. All right, thank you, Joel. Yep. Hey, guys, stick around. We'll be back in a few minutes. We're still going to talk about the classic on this edition of Thurber. Welcome back to Thoroughbred Week with turf racing in this segment. We begin at Woodbine with the Labib Stakes. Hunters Bay, the 9-5 to five favorite, in his first start in over a year. Dan Loisel has the call. River 7 on the inside, Bayonek. Danger Bay continues to hound River 7 as they run to the half-mile pole. Grand Arch tucked in neatly behind them in third. On the far outside, Hunter's Bay comes on to be fourth. Then we have a day's ride in that green cap, Eminent Force, Thespian's Fate. Way back there's Money Talker and Hotep, 47 and four for that opening half mile, less than three furlongs to go in the Labib. On the inside, River Seven, Danger Bay, and Grand Arch is making a move now. Grand Arch is making a move, and Wilson is asking Hunter's Bay to close ground from three and a half lengths back, and they're inside the quarter pole. Game to the inside is River Seven. River Seven opens up two on Grand Arch. River Seven running out of his skin, and they're in the last eighth of a mile. And River Seven is turning this into a runaway. Look at him here. River Seven all by himself to score in the Labib. Ten to one, River Seven draws off to defeat Grand Arch by ten lengths. A one-two finish by Keeneland Sells graduates. Jesse Campbell, the winning jockey in 138 and 4, a 105 wrist speed rating. Winner of the Grade 3 Gray Stakes over the Woodbine Poly Track at 2, and runner up in the final two legs of the Canadian Triple Crown this season, River 7 was coming off a second place finish against older horses in an entry level allowance test on turf. The three year old gelding by Johannesburg was bred in Ontario by William D. Graham and was an $80,000 Keeneland September yearling. Trained by Nick Gonzalez, River 7 has earned $495,000 for Tucci Stables. The best performance of the week, presented by Best PC Service. Call Best PC Service for a free business consultation. To Keeneland for turf fillies and mares in the Root and Riddle Dowager Sticks. Preferential, the 3 to 1 favorite. Once again, here's Kurt Becker. I'm your love alongside of Cash for Clunkers for the top spot and Valiant Girl up on the far outside and third a half length off the lead. Angel Terrace tries to join them now. She moves toward the outside and fourth. Two lengths off the lead. Preferential fifth. Janice Elaine in the clear in sixth. Left a message in the seventh position running six lengths from the front. Kissable, Shepherd's Pie, and Bejoka at the back. And Valiant Girl with Forrest Boyce aboard has the lead on the outside. This double digit long shot on top into the far turn. Angel Terrace goes second. Janice Elaine picks up the leaders from the outside. I'm your love is lost some ground is fourth against the rail preferential between horses and fifth five lengths off the lead left a message in sixth kissable is seventh they turn for home valiant girl leads it by a length and a half angel terrace takes aim on the leader preferential looks down toward the inside janice elaine fourth on the outside left a message fifth in the center of the course angel terrace coming after valiant girl and preferential looks for room between those two left a message fourth on the outside it is angel terrace preferential finds an opening toward the inside left a message is third preferential and Leandro Gonsalves chased by left a message and Robbie Alvarado preferential takes the rude and riddle dowager stakes 
Preferential gets up to defeat, left a message by half a link with Angel Terra settling for third. Leandro Gonsalves aboard in 233 flat. A stakes footer in France last summer for cricket head Marek, Preferential had been winless in her first four U.S. starts for Belmont. She was favored in the Dowager off a neck setback in the Kentucky Downs Ladies Marathon. The English-bred four-year-old filly is by Dan Seeley. Preferential has earned $188,000 for Judmont Farms Incorporated. The lanes and stallion of the week is the Top Sire Candy Ride. Sire of seven grade one winners from his first three crops to race. One of the leading sires of stakes winners this year with 12 to date, Candy Ride has sired such graded winners as Clubhouse Ride and Kettle Corn. Candy Ride's son, grade one winner Twirling Candy, also stands at Lane's Inn. Welcome back to Thoroughbred Week with the Grade 3 Pin Oak Valley View Stakes just ahead in the segment. But first, two-year-old stakes action presented by BC2A Pace. Reduce the likelihood of tying up with BC2A Pace. To Woodbine for Canadian bred two-year-olds and the Cup and Saucer Stakes on turf. Maryland chipper Lulo Lamont, the 9-5 to five favorite, Dan Loisel picks up the call. The Cup and Saucer half mile was 48-3. And they run to the three-eighths pull. Cool Faith watched intently by Matador. Maritime Pulpit is in third position. Asserting Bear trying to get closer in fourth. And from off the pace, Majestic Sunset is coming with a run. And they arrive at the top of the stretch. Matador comes on on the outside of Cool Faith at the quarter pull. And Matador has taken the lead. Cool Faith trying to respond to that challenge. A break of two and a half, three lengths. Asserting Bear is in third. Majestic Sunset on the far outside fourth. This filly is all heart, and she is coming back at Matador. Matador on his hands and knees. On the inside is Cool Faith, who's running her heart out. They're coming down to the wire. Matador and Cool Faith in a gripping photo finish in the cup and saucer. Asserting Bear was third. And let's take another look at that photo finish. It's the Philly Cool Faith fighting back along the rail under 119 pounds in Omar Moreno. But Matador is challenging on the outside, toting 122 pounds and Luis Contreras. And Matador gets up to take the photo by a nose. Long shot asserting Bear runs third. The Keeneland Sells graduate clocked in 147 and 4 over the yielding turf. Fourth in the Vandal Stakes over the main track, and third when his stablemate, by Conquestadore, won the Grade 2 Summer Stakes on turf, Matador breaks his maiden in his third start. The Colt by Malibu Moon was bred in Ontario by Windhaven Farms Limited. The second stakes footer of the weekend for trainer Mark Cassie and owner John C. Oxley, Matador has earned $176,000. The Colt was consigned by Eaton Sales to the 2012 Keeneland September Yearling Sale, where he was purchased by Cassie for $150,000. Cup and Saucer Stakes footer Matador, the Keeneland Sales Graduate of the Week. Two Keeneland for three-year-old turf fillies and the Grade 3 Pin Oak Valley View Stakes. Summer of fun, the 9-5 to five favorite. Once again, here's Kurt Becker. Storm and L against the rail, leading Miss Lemur only by a neck. I.O. Ireland goes third just off the leader's flanks, and then comes sustained on the far outside fourth. Nellie Cashman moves up a closer fifth, now takes fourth against the rail, two lengths off the lead. Yuzuru behind her in sixth, every way toward the outside is seventh. Summer of fun toward the inside, eighth is five from the front, overheard is in ninth. Unbelievable dream, tenth. He done me wrong, song eleventh, frivolous twelfth and last. Forty-eight and one-fifth seconds to time for the first half mile. Storm and L, Miss Lemur. I.O. Ireland sustained. Nellie Cashman fifth toward the inside. Still two lengths off the lead and looking for more room. Yuzuru in the sixth position. Overheard between horses seventh. Overheard in every way. Have to go toward the outside. Summer of Fun is eighth. Moving up sixth toward the rail. Still five lengths off the lead. Storm and L the leader. Nellie Cashman finds an opening sustained and overheard on the far outside. Summer of Fun is still fifth. Overheard on the outside up to take the lead. Summer of Fun coming late. Nellie Cashman there toward the inside. Overheard has the lead. Nellie Cashman second. Summer of Fun third. Overheard with the advantage. Overheard and Eureka da Silva to take the Pin Oak Valley View. Overheard by Adina Springs stallion Macho Uno and bred and owned by the race's sponsor gets up to defeat Nellie Cashman by a length. Eureka da Silva aboard in 143 and 1. 
second in the Grade 3 Appalachian Stakes during the spring, the Canadian Shipper records her first graded stakes victory. The Malcolm Pierce trainee was coming off a second place finish in the La Lornette Stakes at Woodbine. The three-year-old filly was bred in Kentucky by Pin Oak Stud and races in the colors of Pin Oak Stable. In the money in all 10 career starts, Overheard has earned $323,000. American Produce Records is now available online. Visit brisnet.com slash APR for unlimited access to the pedigrees of more than 3 million thoroughbreds for just $275 a year. Time now for the inside track on the Breeders' Cup Classic with TCI's John and Joel. Let's talk Breeders' Cup Classic now. Joel, you know we saw a light field in the distaff. We see possibly 13 horses in here. Joel, they are top-class horses, and they include the first three finishers of last year's Breeders' Cup. A great field, John. A good mix of speed and off-the-pace type horses. So, in my opinion, pace is going to make this race. Your top contenders in here, Fort Larned, the defending winner, he wants to go to the lead. Game on Dude wants to go to the lead. Now, he broke bad last year, and it cost him. It allowed Fort Larned to take this field wire to wire. Mucho Macho Man, I think, might have been best last year. He just could not get to Fort Larned over that track. So pace is important, and I think a long shot might hold the key in here, and that's Moreno, John. Mm. He could inject some speed in this race, really set it up for the closers. I'll tell you two horses I'm watching out for, and you got them here in the top five. That's Gradar and Painter. Joel, Gradar's coming into this race. Todd thinks he's training great. What do you think of his chances? Well, both those horses are tactical enough to make their own races. I think they can both stalk in here. I don't think you want to be too far back at Santa Anita, depending on how the race shapes up. Gradar comes in off a good prep. Mile and a quarter is the question for him, but it's not the quality. Painter, another quality horse, been disappointing this year, but he likes Santa Anita, and he can stalk as well. All right, thank you, Joel. Thank you guys for watching. To see all of our top fives, visit OneFastHorse.com. And once again, thanks for watching us here on Thoroughbred Week. Thoroughbred Week is presented by Remards, total line of equine products featuring total respiratory and endurance, enhanced performance in oxygen capacity, and beneficial for respiratory hemorrhage. For further information, please log on to remardi.com. Time now for the feature race of the week presented by Keeneland, investing in racing's future since 1936. To Keeneland for three-year-old fillies in the grade two Raven Run Stakes. 14 went postward with Silcita, the three to one favorite. Here's the call by Kurt Becker. And they're off in the Lexus Raven Run Stakes. Finding more, hustles away from the gate. Eden Prairie out running in the second position. Turn by turn, right there to contest the early pace as well. Theta Love and Mine is away running in the fourth spot. Jewel of a Cat up close in the fifth position. Chow Bella Luna goes six toward the outside. Foley Living is seventh out in the center of the racetrack. And then Elusive Fate, eighth back toward the inside. Silcita is in ninth. Madam Cactus travels in the tenth spot by option 11th in between horses. Followed by Sitting at the Bar, who moves up one position from 12th against the rail. Irish Loot wide in the 13th spot and primed for for passion, last of 14 into the far turn, Eden Prairie and turn by turn, side by side for the top spot, fully living, wide in third, but in the clear, just two and a half lengths off the lead, around the turn, and then finding more, being ridden along fourth in between horses, Chow Bella Luna looks toward the outside from fifth, Madam Cactus a wide sixth, followed by a Lucy Fade in seventh, my option is eighth in between horses, still running nine lengths off the lead, Eden Prairie turn by turn, joined by fully living, finding more behind them, Madam Cactus and my option out in the center of the track with Chow Bella Luna, and then turn by turn down toward the rail. Eden Prairie with the lead. Madam Cactus and my option on the grandstand side. Prime for Passion looks for room in behind horses. Eden Prairie chased by my option and Madam Cactus. Eden Prairie, my option and Madam Cactus. My option, Madam Cactus, Eden Prairie. Oh, and it is Madam Cactus and Joe Rocco Jr. with a big stretch rally to take the Lexus Raven run. In her second start off a 10-month layoff, 11-to-1 Madame Cactus draws in off the also-eligible list and defeats 10-to-1 Eden Prairie by a neck. Joe Rocco Jr. aboard in 121-3. Joe Talamo was named to ride the filly, but with her status for the race uncertain until a few hours before post time, he elected to stay in California. Trainer Peter Erton was able to secure the services of Rocco, whose original mount, Lighthouse Bay, was a late scratch, allowing the winner into the field. Ironically, in her seasonal debut, Madame Cactus was a close second to last year's Raven Run winner, Gypsy Robin, in the surf stakes at Del Mar. The filly by Cactus Ridge was bred in Kentucky by La Siega, LLC. 
Madame Cactus has earned $325,000 from Mr. and Mrs. Mark C. Farrell. That's it for this week. We'll see you next week here on Thoroughbred Week. Thoroughbred Week with John Henderson has been presented by ActiStat, Adina Springs, Bloodstock Research, Breeders' Cup, Claiborne Farm, Duck Lane's Veterinary Pharmacy, Hackyard Pharmacy, Horse Sense, Keeneland, Lane's End, Malone's, New York Thoroughbred Breeding and Development Fund, OCD Pellets, Old Colony Insurance Services, PBI Bank, Quillen Leather and Tack, Ramard, Sally Horse Fans, Shadwell Farm, and Windstar Farm. Online at tbreadweek.com.